and welcome to the Master and Drone Whiskey Room. My name is Jason Seen. If you're a subscriber, thanks so much for coming back and watching this episode. Uh, if you're new to the channel and looking for the latest in whiskey and bourbon news and reviews, you have found the right place, so hit that subscribe button below and that bell notification so you know when I'm releasing a new video and also you can join one of my live streams. So produced in September 2005 and bottled in February 2019, this is the latest release in Heaven Hill's Old Fitzgerald Bottled and Bond series. These are biannual releases. This is the Old Fitzgerald 13 year Bottled and Bond Bourbon and it's today's Mash and Drum Review. So the Bottled and Bond regulations were developed to ensure quality during a time when product tampering was more common. Old Fitz and a handful of other brands are a tribute to the days where the best whiskey was approved and monitored by the Bottled and Bond Act of 1897. In a world where whiskey and bourbon labels sport a lot of fancy marketing terms like old, reserve, handcrafted, and a lot more, uh, bottled and bond is still a phrase that invokes quality and trust inside that bottle. Each spring and fall, a new edition of the Old Fitzgerald Bottled and Bond Decanter series is released. Bottled in an ornate decanter inspired by an original 1950s Old Fitzgerald Diamond Decanter, the series reflects the traditions of both the Old Fitzgerald history tied to John E. Fitzgerald and the historic bottled and bond designation. The Old Fitzgerald line is well known for the distilling pedigree as the brand was first registered in 1884 by S.C. Herbst and was eventually sold to Julian P. Pappy Van Winkle during Prohibition. Pappy moved production of Old Fitz to his distillery where it became the first great weeded bourbon. In 1999, Heaven Hill bought the Old Fitzgerald brand and began distilling it at the Bernheim Distillery in Louisville. As with the other expressions in this ongoing series, the 13-year-old spring 2019 release comes bottled in this beautiful ornate decanter sporting a green label, which the distillery says will stay consistent across all spring releases. As with the case for the past editions, this edition's tax strip, which has always been a signature of transparency on bottled and bond products, will disclose when the liquid was produced and bottled. This is bottled and bond and bottled at 100 proof and sports an MSRP of about 130 bucks. All right, guys, so here's a close-up of the bottle, and yeah, the bottle is pretty damn gorgeous. Uh, Heaven Hill debuted the new vision of Old Fitzgerald just over a year ago. Uh, it is designed as a premium, moderately-aged whiskey in a decanter, each one denoting both the original barreling season of the whiskey inside and the age of the liquid once pulled from the barrel. So this was made in fall 2005 and bottled uh, on January 30th, 2019. Uh, you could get all that information on this, uh, you know, this really nice tax strip. I mean, you can't say enough about the bottle. It's just, uh, it's it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous bottle, and I think part of that pit, uh, plays into the price a little bit. So uh, let's get a pour of this and see uh, how good the juice is inside. Um, I have taken a few pours of this uh, just to kind of test it out, and we are going to get into all the good stuff inside. So, oh, here we go. Let's get started. All right, guys. So before we get started, I want to call out a good friend of mine, uh, one of my viewers that helped me uh, get a hold of this bottle. Uh, I was trying to get a hold of this bottle and just going to get it for a good price. And uh, I want to say thanks to, uh, to him for uh, helping me get this one. So cheers to you, buddy. So as I always do, I've taken a few pours of this stuff and um, try to pull out some tasting notes. So let's get into the review and let's go start with the color first. So here we go. Uh, wow, I poured a lot in this glass. <laughs> it's all good, though. Uh, we have actually a really nice golden chestnut color. This has a, a little bit deeper, richer color to it, especially being 13 years old. Again, sticks to the glass really nicely, 100 proof. Uh, runs a little bit, but not too much. Has a really nice color though. It's not too light, not too dark. It's got a good 13 year old uh, color to it. So let's get into the nose and see what we get. Here we go. So the first thing that jumps out of the glass to me is this caramel corn and fruit sweetness. The fruit sweetness that I've been getting in my first couple of pours is a uh, like a peach flavor, getting like this a kind of a peachy type aspect to it. There is some of that old fits, a little bit of that nutty characteristic there too. As you kind of dig down deep, more of that butterscotch flavor comes out on a really nice weeded bourbon. You get this really deep, rich butterscotch note on there as well. There's some uh, some baking spice in there too. You get a lot of cinnamon. Get a little bit of uh, maybe a, a, um, a nutmeg characteristic in there as well. 
And uh, I, th I think the really, the nice influence here is you get a really beautiful oak sweetness here. There's a nice oak uh, profile to it. Yeah, but I mean, for the most part, it's a lot of caramel, a lot of corn sweetness, a lot of cinnamon. You get that a little bit of a peach flavor in there, some baking spices. It's a very inviting nose, a really beautiful weeded bourbon nose. So let's get into the palate and uh, see how this tastes. Here we go. Cheers, everybody. Man, the, the first thing that, that really hits your palate on this, I think, for me, is it's like this, um, this chocolate raisin flavor. It's really nice on the palate. It's kind of the first thing that kind of hits you. There's a lot of that corn sweetness, a lot of, um, a lot of that weeded bourbon type sweetness flavor too. There's still some fruit characteristic in there. I'm not getting as much peach as I was on the, um, on the nose. It kind of hits your palate a little bit darker and richer than it does on the nose. It's very light, fruity, but on the palate, it just comes in darker and richer. Let's go for another sip here. Cheers. Honey, vanilla. Mm. A toasted, the toasted oak characteristic on here is beautiful. It's a really nice balance between all the sweet flavors. There's that little bit of a nutty characteristic that you get on the finish, some good oak flavor. Really nice. Let's go for another sip here. Mm. So the thing about this is that's been surprising me is the, the, uh, I say the word spikiness a lot, and it's kind of that, that oak spice flavor that you get. Uh, and you normally can get that with a, with a good rye, uh, you know, good rye bourbon, you know, bourbon that has some rye in it. But this being a weeded bourbon really surprised me because it's actually coming in a little bit hotter than, uh, than you would think a weeded bourbon would. This one has a really nice toasted oak finish to it, and it just lingers. It's like, it's kind of, I've used the analogy before, like someone just kind of going in the back of your throat and dusting some hot pepper back there and just how it just kind of tingles and lingers there. And you don't get that often too much with a, with a, with a weeded bourbon, but this is definitely bringing that and I love that about this bottle. Let's go for another sip. You know, the thing about this is that you're getting all this beautiful sweetness up front. Yeah, you know, okay, so now that peach flavor is still kind of hanging out, kind of lingering around. It's definitely there now. The more I sip it, those peaches come out. More of the butterscotch note uh, starts to kind of come a little bit to the forefront. We get the vanilla, you get the caramel. Man, it. I would say the finish here is not too long. I would say it's more, um, I don't know, probably a little bit more short to medium. Probably more medium than short with that lingering finish. But it finishes really smooth. But man, that... That lingering pepper spice on the back of the palate is just really remarkable. It's really, it's, I think it's a testament to being 13 years in a barrel, really spending time getting some, uh, some really nice oak notes in there. All right, let's take one more sip and go through the whole experience here. Cheers. Mm, man, this is good. I want to not like it so much because I know it, it is a hard uh, bottle to get, but for a weeded bourbon, this is really bringing some absolutely beautiful flavors. The proof point on it is, is kind of just right for the flavors you're getting as well. You're getting all these sweet flavors up front, like I mentioned, the caramel, the oak, the sweet oak, the vanilla, the butterscotch. As it hits mid-palate, you start getting these fruit flavors that come into play, these, this peach note that I keep getting that has definitely transitioned to the nose the more I sip it. Um, from the nose, I should say, the more I sip it, it's just kind of hanging out there right in the mid-palate. Get some a uh, little bit of a honey aspect there, and then as it works its way back, the finish on it, all of a sudden you get like this spike on the back of your throat, that that black pepper note, that sweet oak flavor that just kind of lingers in the in the back of your palate. It's it's delicious, um, man. It's really good. But um, before I call this out as being as good as I think it is, let's do a little bit of comparison. All right, guys. So I said I want to do a little bit of a comparison. This is a pretty big comparison. I have four weeded bourbons here. So we have the Rebel Yell 10 Year Single Barrel, which is about 60 bucks, a little easier to find. It's 10 years old, the weeded bourbon. Even though it's not from Heaven Hill, it is sourced from, uh, from Heaven Hill by Luxco Distilling. Uh, we have Larceny, which is from Heaven Hill, also weeded bourbon coming in at 92 proof. Uh, then we have the Old Fitz 9 Year, which was the, uh, the last year release, and the Old Fitz 13, which is the newest release. So let's uh, see what we get when we compare these and see if the 13 is really as good as I think it is. So... Um, actually, let's start with the Rebel Yell first. Here we go. 
Wow, the Rebel Yell's pretty close. It really comes in with a nice fruity characteristic. You still get that fruitiness. A little bit of that nutty characteristic. Definitely has a Heaven Hill type profile to it. Mm. It's got a nice finish too. This one isn't as lasting with that peppery note on the uh, as the 13, but it is really good. And this is very sweet, very fruity. This, the Rebel Yell's always been one of my favorite weeded bourbons. Man, yeah, that's... That's even better than I remembered it. Um, man, good vanilla, good caramels. That that kind of fruitiness, that peachiness that I was getting in this, is it's there a little bit. Or maybe this could just be affecting it a little bit, but it's got a good finish. But the it doesn't leave that lingering spiky note that I'm getting in 13 that I really like. But this is absolutely delicious. So I'm going for another quick sip of water. All right, let's try some Larceny next. Now this is 92 proof, it's a little bit lower. This is a non-H statement. Uh, so let's go into this one, see what we get here. Mm. Yeah, it, it's super sweet. You can tell this doesn't have the age to it like the others do. It has a little bit more youth to it. It's a lot more sweet. You don't get that, that lingering oak finish to it. It's got a nice finish, though, when it comes to, you know, giving you that Kentucky hug. You definitely feel the proof on this a little bit more. Let's go for another sip. All right, again, this has a little bit more of that, that fruity characteristic, but I mean, the corn, the caramel sweetness that's in here, it's really kind of overpowering. It's really nice on the palate. You get a little bit of an oak characteristic, but not much. It finishes really smooth, really easy. Leaves a little bit of a lingering oak spice there, but not nearly as long as this one so far. But um, always, Larceny is always a great value weeder. Um, let me take a quick sip of water. All right, let's go into the Old Fitz 9 and see how it compared with the 13 here. Cheers. Wow, see, the Old Fitz 9, this one was more of a traditional weeder to me. This one I was a little bit more, I think, um, for me personally, this one I was a little bit more disappointed in just because I wanted more out of the finish on this bottle. This one comes in with a really nice sweetness. All the things that I was getting here, a little bit of a peach flavor, some butterscotch, some corn, some caramel. But the finish was just lacking for this for me. Now for the 13, yeah, the 13 is just richer, fuller. I mean, I know it's four years older, but man, the flavors that are in this one are way more robust. They coat the palate better. That finish on here is just really nice, really spiky. Gives a really nice peppery, uh, a lingering pepper spice on the back end. And the flavors here are really remarkable. I'm really impressed with this 13. And if I had to pick the closest one to this that you can get for a cheaper price, gladly, I'm going to say it's the Rebel Yell 10 Year. The Rebel Yell 10 Year has some of those fruit flavors, has some of that spice to it. You get some of those oak flavors to it. And this could be had for about 60 bucks, which is, you know, half the price of this. And this is definitely, for the most part, more available. So if you guys can't find this, uh, definitely go look for the Rebel Yell 10-year. All right, guys. So for me, the 13-year Old Fitzgerald Bottled and Bond release is, is an absolute winner. I absolutely love this stuff. It's definitely more impressive to me than the 9-year was. Now, if you're looking for a smoother, weeded experience, one that finishes easy, one that drinks a lot easier, then I think the 9 is what you would probably like, or even Larceny. Um, but if you want a little bit more depth of flavor, some, a little bit more of a finish on it, some lingering spice, then the 13 is really where it's at. I did not expect that type of flavor profile to come out of this, especially after the experience I had with the 9. And it's, it's just super impressive to me. I really love it. Now, for 130 bucks, I know that's a tough price point, and also finding this can be really tough. Um, but if you look at the market and where things are now within bourbon, this one is actually priced pretty well. You're getting a 13-year-old bottled and bond bourbon, which you know is high quality, in this beautiful style bottle. I think this is actually a really great value if you could find it. Now, if $130 was too steep, like I said, we went through the tasting. Rebel Yell 10-year will be an absolute great uh, suggestion for you because it does offer some of those sweet flavors, a little bit of those fruitiness uh, that the orange spice, the peach flavor. Uh, it definitely has a little bit of a lingering finish, some nice oak flavor to it. Uh, very similar to this, just not as intense. So if you can't get this, definitely look for the Rebel Yell 10-year. 
All right, guys, well, thanks again for watching the Master Drum Whiskey Room for this review of the Old Fitzgerald 13-year-old Bottled and Bond Bourbon. Hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't yet, find me on Instagram and find me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had this at all or if you've compared it to any other weeded bourbons like I did here. If you compare it to the nine, let me know what your favorite is. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It is the people you share it with. So cheers, and I'm going to have some more Old Fitz. Take care.